One of the main reasons that we are having this info session today is because we want to encourage you to start thinking about taking classes at Santa Fe Community College. And there is no time like the present to do that. In fact, classes begin at SFCC on Tuesday, January 18th. So once again, spring 2022 semester begins on Tuesday, January 18th. That is still plenty of time to apply to SFCC and do all the necessary things you need to do to take classes. So right now is still a good time and we have some experts from different areas across our campus that can help guide you and get you started on your academic journey. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask in the chat or feel free to turn off your microphone and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions as they come in. To get started, we are going to begin with our amazing student admissions counselor. She is going to talk to you a little bit about herself and just give you just a little bit of overview about what she does and how she helps students. In many cases, she is the very first face that many of our new students see, or for sure, one of the very first voices that they hear. She is just a tremendous resource, somebody that really, truly just believes in student empowerment and meeting their needs, as does everyone else on this, on this call. But it's just my pleasure to introduce to you all Daniela Gurule, our student admissions counselor. Daniela, please take it away. Wonderful. Thank you, Marcos. It's such an honor to work with all of you. So we have an amazing team. So as Marcos mentioned, I am the student admissions counselor and my role is I'm here to help you. So I know sometimes, you know, getting started with college can seem kind of daunting, like you don't know where to start, what you need to do. So I am here for you. What I do is I can um, make, you know, appointments with you over the phone or we can get on like this online and I can help you through the admission process. So I did receive my first two degrees from SFCC, so I know how it is to be a student, and I love SFCC. There's so much support, and so I'm glad that I can be a resource for you and be part of your support team. So that's how many of us are who are on here right now. We're here for you. So what I'm going to do is I will put my information in the chat so you can make an appointment with me. And we can just talk, even if you don't know what you want to pursue, you know, we can talk about, um, you know, what options there are. So we have over 100 degrees and certificates. There's some certificates that you can do in as little as four months. So it's really finding a good balance for you. And, you know, we offer classes in the morning, the evenings, um, you know, online, we have some in person. So we are here for the community and I am here for you. So Again, I'm Daniela. I'm going to put my contact info in there, and I am here to help you through the admission process. I can connect you to these amazing individuals on here, like Miss Susie with Financial Aid or Emily and some of the, our other amazing advisors. We have our TRIO program, so I am here to help, and I'm just so glad that you're here. So welcome, everyone. Nice to meet all of you. She was, she was so cool there. Thank you very much, Daniela. I really, really appreciate that. And again, she is really just a helpful person to just get you started on your academic journey. And she can answer just about any of those questions about how do I apply to SFCC? How, who do I talk to in financial aid or advising? So again, she is just a great resource and just that first face that you can start working with. Um, we also can provide you with a campus tour so you can see our beautiful campus and just see some of the tremendous facilities that we have to offer. So once again, Daniela, thank you so much. Moving right along, um, you, may be, um, you may know a little bit about dual credit. If you don't, it, this is a wonderful opportunity to hear from our fantastic dual credit specialist, Nikki McKay, who's going to be speaking in just a moment. Um, even if you, you may know somebody who's in high school, you may have a child or a, a sibling or somebody, a cousin that's in high school that may want to take advantage of taking classes at SFCC while still in high school and getting that college credit and that high school credit. 
So without further ado, Nikki, can you tell us a little bit about dual credit and how that helps our high school students? Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to see you tonight. Um, I think of dual credit as the best deal in town. And we live in a place that is amazing, remarkable, and it's expensive. So dual credit is affordable. It's, um, it's based on um, a program that the, the state legislature instituted where high school students can take college classes where the tuition and the college fees are waived. And the only out-of-pocket expense might be if there's a lab fee or in a medical class, if there's a certification card fee, but that's something we could discuss way ahead of time. And the Santa Fe Public Schools um, as the district or another school district, they pay for the students' textbooks. So it's really an amazing deal. And um, our college is really about access and affordability. So I feel like dual credit is a, a, a wonderful way to start to get to know um, Santa Fe Community College. We partner with 21 high schools. And some of the high schools are not in Santa Fe, but they're in the state of New Mexico. And um, there are some really unique programs that some are offered at the high school and some are offered through us through main campus. So we have a partnership with every high school um, that's in our network. We work with the high school counselors to help students pick classes and um, go through all the steps of, of uh, application, registration, and finding their books, and also um, communicating with professors. So um, I, I meet a lot of high school students who are interested in on college. So dual credit is a great way to do that, where um, they can start earning credits that are in general education classes that will then transfer. And the state of New Mexico, all of the colleges have come together and there's a list of core classes that do transfer. So if you're really interested, or if you know a high school student who um, is um, you know, really set on advancing, dual credit could be a great way to do that. Also, if you know a high school student or if you are a high school student who just wants enrichment, and exploration, our dual credit program also offers that. Um, today, I was talking to students about taking um, Japanese classes with us. We have a really interesting array of world languages that many high schools aren't able to offer. Um, we also have an incredible fine arts department, film department, and, um, and we also offer you know, really, really strong foundations in English, math, history, et cetera. So, um, so these are four credit classes. And uh, in our department, we also help students problem solve and get to know the resources on campus. You're going to hear from a few people today who represent different resources on campus, and they're really amazing. Um, so I think of dual credit as a way to practice being a college student and um, getting to know a campus, getting to know resources. And that experience is really valuable. You know, sometimes we're put into different situations as a student where we might feel worried or nervous about checking in with the professor or getting to know other people in our class. And this gives us just great, great practice and great presentation. Um, I was a dual credit student. <laughs> in Louisiana. So um, this program has been around and it's in different states, you know, so I feel like it's, it's just a wonderful way to begin um, a lifelong kind of experience with a college. And, um, and, and our office is really accessible and here for you. So please, if you have any questions, I'll put my information in the chat. And, um, and just know that that um, I work with Marcos and Daniela and all of our departments, but Marcos, Daniela, and I are our core group and we're here to help. And uh, we're really excited to help you get started. If you know someone who is interested, please have them contact me and, and I'll put that information right now. So thank you. And it was a pleasure to talk to everybody today. Nikki, thank you so much. So yes, it is absolutely the best deal in town. Our dual credit students literally can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on college tuition and textbooks. And at the same time, they are getting a number of college credits out of the way before they even graduate from high school. Our next presenter is, again, just somebody that is instrumental 
in the success of so many of our students. And this is one of the necessary steps in order to become a successful student at SFCC. I am talking about our academic advisor, Emily McCarthy. Emily, without further ado, please take it away. Hi, thank you, Marcos. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I just want to say before we start that I started out of community college too. Uh, back in 1991, I wanted to go to UNM to study to be a secondary high school teacher, a uh, secondary English high school teacher. And I knew I was putting myself through school. And I knew that if I started out at the community college and I took all of my general education classes, like my English, math, science, history, that all of that stuff would transfer to my degree at UNM. So by attending the community college for the first two years of my you know, four year degree, I was able to get a lot of coursework done at a really affordable price. So you know, kudos to you guys for, for starting at a community college because it's a really good place to start. It's a nice transition between high school and a big university because the community is a little bit smaller. We're kind of more personal. Not that um, I went to UNM. I love UNM, so don't be scared of big schools. But I think sometimes thinking about the next steps, that's a little bit intimidating to people. But um, we are local, personable, small. Uh, so what I do at the community college is I'm an academic advisor and I advise in the schools of business, education, and professional studies. So at the community college in our welcome and advising center, we have advisors that can help you. And then in the individual schools, we also have advisors. So when you're first starting out, uh, a good place to start is the welcome and advising center. Uh, those folks can get you started with your initial courses, taking your placement tests and all that kind of stuff. And then once you've kind of got a semester under your belt, you probably should reach out to the advisor in your school. You can also reach out immediately. I'm not saying, you know, there's a timeline. You can definitely reach out to us immediately. And what's good about having an advisor in your school is we know more about like the granular specifics of your degree. We know about the curriculum. We know about the, the course load, um, you know, how much work is going to be in a certain class, kind of the temperaments of certain professors, if you're curious about who to take a certain class with. Um, we also know about classes that transfer, how they transfer to us, how we transfer to other schools. If you need to have a substitution made to one of the required classes of your degree plan, we can help you with that. So, all advisors at the community college are cross-trained, so everybody can help you, but it's really kind of great if you can get connected with the advisor in your school, because then you've got someone who's really an expert in the content area. Um, so what do we do? Uh, it's very basic. You know, a lot of it is just nuts and bolts. What classes do I need? What paperwork do I need to fill out to graduate? That kind of stuff. But we're also really like your go-to people on campus. We can answer any question you have. We can direct you to the right office if you're not sure where to go. If you got a letter in the mail and you don't know what it means, you can bring it to us and we can help you. We also help you with language. There's a whole new vocabulary that you're gonna learn as a college student. What's a prerequisite? What does it mean to withdraw or audit? What does it mean to drop? Um, what is maximum time frame? So like all this new language that you're gonna learn and that people are gonna start throwing at you like pretty immediately. We're just here to help familiarize you with that and, and get you on the right track. We help you pick your classes when you're ready to leave the college. Uh, we can help you transfer to other schools. We can explain the process. We can look at the degree plan of the school that you're going to to make sure you're taking the right kind of classes. If you're a student coming to us with credits, we can also help evaluate your transcript from your previous school to see you know, what sounds like it could count as a class um, in our degree. And what else? Oh, um, as Daniela mentioned earlier, um, since COVID, we're, we're all really well equipped to work with you remotely or in person. So if you feel more comfortable with a phone call, we can do that. We can also meet virtually like this. And what's great about meeting in a Zoom call or a Teams call is we can show you things. Uh, and one thing that I'm thinking about is our student portal. 
which is the interface where you get your email, where you register for classes, where you order your textbooks. So once you get in and start navigating that system, it's really intuitive and easy to use. But in the beginning, it's kind of like, where do I click? Where do I find that? So in a virtual meeting like this, we can share our screens and kind of walk you through things. So that's, that's another kind of good thing that we do. And that's kind of about it. Um, I'll put my information in the chat and uh, feel free to email me or call me if you have any questions. Welcome. Emily, thank you so much. And yes, uh, the advisors are just incredibly instrumental in making sure that our students are successful every single semester. So definitely um, um, when Emily puts uh, the information in the, in the chat box, definitely take advantage of that and feel free to reach out. Moving on uh, is going to be our next presenter from just a phenomenal department on campus. I am talking about our TRIO area. And to speak a little bit more about TRIO and its significance and the importance of TRIO to our students, to many of our students, I should say, is our TRIO coach and coordinator, Lauren Smith. Lauren, please take it away. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. So glad that you are here. Um, I want to talk about the TRIO program, TRIO, T-R-I-O, four little letters. It's very easy. Um, the TRIO program is a federal program. So there are TRIO programs all over the country and all over New Mexico. Um, there's one at UNM, there's one at CNM, they're everywhere. And TRIO is kind of like an extra layer of support for students. Um, all of the things that you've already heard about and that you will hear about uh, this evening, we do all of that and we work with those programs to make sure that we're doing it right. But um, we are there to give you a lot of personalized and um, uh, individual attention. So um, what we do is when you join TRIO, you are assigned a coach. That's my job title. I'm a coach. So you'll have someone... Um, who reaches out to you several times during the semester, see how things are going, make sure everything's okay. If it's not okay, that's, that's what we're here for, is to make sure that we can help you. Um, and we're also there for you to reach out to us. So any kind of question that comes up, Emily did a really good job of explaining how intimidating college can be, the vocabulary, all the different offices, all the different communication that you're gonna be receiving. So it's really nice to have somebody like your trio coach to be able to go to, to ask, questions and, and find answers. And if we don't know the answer, we will direct you to somebody who has that answer. So you get a coach when you join TRIO. We also have um, other services. We have a lot of tutoring. We work with the tutoring center to make sure that we try to provide tutoring for almost every course that you'll, you'll be taking. Um, we do a lot of workshops um, and we can do those workshops also sort of on, a, on, a, um, on an individualized basis. If you're the type of person who has, uh, who procrastinates, who has a hard time getting work in on time, who is sort of intimidated by assignments, who needs some help to just sort of work through an assignment. That's what we're there for, time management issues. If you are experiencing issues, problems around personal care, personal, your personal health, your mental health, we can, we're there for that too. So we're kind of a, a one-stop shop. We can, we can try to help with everything. Um, we also do fun stuff. If, if it's not COVID, um, we go to the opera, we go to movies, we go to museums. So we have these field trips um, and we do volunteer stuff too. We do community service. We go to Kitchen Angels or we go to the Humane Society to do stuff like that. Um, we have a really nice office, a small space where you can come and um, drop in and um, you can just eat your lunch there. You can just come in for a chat. You can come in and work. We have a nice computer lab with a printer. Um, it's a nice place to be, a comfortable, warm place. People often say that being part of TRIO is like being part of a family. So that's what TRIO offers. And in order to be a part of TRIO, um, you, there, are, there, are some, there are some requirements, um, just one actually. Um, you do have to be a citizen or a permanent resident. And in addition to that, if you qualify um, financially, if you are qualifying for FAFSA, then you're eligible for TRIO, no problem. If you're the first person in your family to go to college, first generation, then you qualify for TRIO. And if you, um, if you had an IEP in high school and you have a documented learning disability or a physical disability, 
then also you, you qualify for TRIO. So any of those things will work. Um, we work with a wide variety of people, students who are fresh out of high school and students who are coming back after years of having been away from school. So it's a nice mix of people and it's, um, it's just what you need to be a successful college student. So I'll put some information in the chat as well about how to contact me and the program. But welcome to SFCC, regardless of whether you join TRIO or not. Um, I wish you the very best here. Thanks. Lauren, thank you so much. And yes, our, so many of our students benefit from TRIO. It is a phenomenal program. Moving on to our next presenter, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Student Resource Center. So this is just gonna be another example of just Santa Fe Community College's dedication to our students and ensuring their success through a variety of ways, obviously through academia um, and other support areas. Uh, our next presenter, Jocelyn Hernandez Monsalvo, is going to give you um, a nice overview of some of the resources that can be provided to our students and their families. So without further ado, Jocelyn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marcos. Hi, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Hernandez. And like most presenters, I too attended SFCC right after high school. And then I went on to a four-year university to finish my degree. Um, I am the bilingual student resource coordinator at SFCC. And like Marco said, I oversee the student resource center. This is a fairly new position and service at the college. But most of the things that we do is we try to offer specific information about non-academic resources to, to students uh, and resources throughout the community, not just only at SFCC. And then we provide appropriate referrals to those agencies. And the resources focus mostly on basic needs such as housing and shelter, uh, food, legal services, uh, transportation, if you need assistance paying utilities, um, if you need assistance connecting to a physician or mental health services. And these services are free and confidential and you do not have to be a student to access this service. But once you do become a student at SFCC, you will find that it's very easy and there are many ways that you can get in touch with the Student Resource Center. But one of the easiest ways to find the Resource Center is to go through um, our webpage, which I have listed some resources there already. So if you wanna take a look at it, I'll put the link in the chat and maybe you can start looking at some of the, these resources even before you're a student at SFCC. Thank you. Excellent, Jocelyn, thank you so much. So this is just a small example of some of the tremendous resources and programs that we have to offer at SFCC from academic advising to TRIO, dual credit, student resource center. There are a number of folks in today's virtual session, session I should say, that are here and eager and happy to help you. Moving on right now, let's talk a little bit about some of the academic programs and areas that we have on our campus. As Daniela was saying a little bit earlier, we offer over 100 different degree and certificate options. So that's a lot of different programs and a lot of different opportunities for our students to really get started on that path and find that job that's just, or that career that's just really gonna set them and help them for the rest of their lives. To talk a little bit about the School of Liberal Arts, the School of Arts, Design and Media Arts, I'm gonna have my awesome student admissions counselor, Daniela Gurule, tag team, me, tag team with me on this. And we're gonna just talk a little bit about the three different schools that we have on campus and some of the different programs in these areas. So Daniela, take it away. Wonderful. So yes, yeah, so we have amazing, amazing fine arts, liberal arts um, departments. So in our liberal arts, we do have like our world languages, how Nikki was mentioning when she was speaking about dual credit. So we offer a wide range of, you know, language. Um, we have an amazing American Sign Language program. You know, we have Spanish and several other languages. We also have creative writing. Um, it's such a great program and department. Um, as far as arts go, 
we have an amazing art department. So we have, for example, like drawing and painting. We have fine woodworking. We have ceramics. We have jewelry and media, um, jewelry and metal arts. And then we have a really strong media arts um, department as well. So that's like web design, graphic design, um, 3D animation. We have the only accredited um, video game design program in the state. And it's a phenomenal program. The labs are amazing. We also have a very strong film program, which is super cool. And how Marcos was mentioning, if you ever want to come and check out the facilities, you can contact me and we can set up a tour, you know, but film is huge in New Mexico and we teach different aspects of film, you know, there's screenwriting and editing and there's lighting and, um, you know, if, if you're interested in film, a great um, class to start with is um, the film crew because you kind of, it's kind of like the boot camp for film. And a lot of our faculty, they're, they're in the industry. So they know, they, they come with, you know, years of knowledge and experience. So very strong programs. And, you know, people can start with us and transfer on. Some people transfer on to IAIA or different art uh, programs and just a phenomenal, you know, all around. So whether it's liberal arts or our fine arts, you're going to be in great hands, amazing facilities. And the, the cool thing is cl small class sizes. So you're really going to get a lot of attention from your instructors, get to know your peers. So that's, that's our fine arts and liberal arts. So amazing, amazing programs. And Daniela, thank you so much. And we also, we just got a great question in the chat. Does media arts have a digital arts class course? And and I, so the cool thing is, um, so if we, and maybe we can, um, maybe we can even show you guys how to do this. So if you go onto our website and if you look at our programs, you can see what classes are required for each degree. Um, and so we do have, so Media Arts definitely has digital arts because it does cover, um, you know, a wide range. There's different um, concentrations in media arts. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up. So if and you, Daniela, can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Excellent. So, beautiful. So yeah, if you click on academics and then if you look cool, so this is how you can look up a credit class and you can go ahead and select your term. So we're going to click uh, select spring 2022. And then we're going to go down here to our media arts. I'm trying to remember what it's under film and digital media arts perfect and we're going to hit look up this is going to show us all the classes that are offered so this is you know um so web design audio production that's another really strong program um so introduction to digital media web design principles of design so these are all the classes that we're offering for the spring semester under media arts and film. Um, and again, our amazing advisors can help, you know, help you create a schedule and let you know what classes you need to take. And you can also look up, um, yeah, so these are all of the classes. So again, you would just look this up on our homepage. And then Marcos, can you show them if you click on academics, I wanna show them all programs. Yes. Cool. So, right so, if, over here. Mm -hmm. so if you click on all programs, um, this is going to show you the different programs that we offer. And if you click on one of these, it'll give you information on the program. It'll show you what classes are required for that specific degree. It'll show you what's required if there's a certificate. So this is very helpful. So if you see their media arts, perfect. Talks about the program talks about career opportunities. And then where you see degrees or certificates, if you click on that, it's gonna show you all the classes that are required for that specific program. So this is you know, really good to reference. Um, and then again, we have the support from our advisors. And if you click on the class, it does give you a description. Um, it tells you when it's offered. So this is a really great resource. 
And again, um, you know, if you, I know it's a lot of information. So if you forget how to do this, again, you can make appointments with us. We can help bring this up, how um, Emily was saying, and we can walk you through it. So thank you, Marcos. Yes. So really strong media arts program. Excellent, Daniela. Thank you so much. So yeah, that, I mean, that is a big school that covers a large variety of different programs and classes. So if we're talking liberal arts, we're also talking about things like social sciences. So if you're looking at programs such as psychology or world languages, or looking at just doing like some academic transfers, like getting those general credits, like your English classes, your, your um, humanities classes to transfer, that's all gonna fall under the uh, liberal arts area. And yes, if we're talking about media arts and design and fine arts, those are just some of the most hands-on classes that we have at SFCC. If you are someone that is really just, you're, you're more of a person that's more interested in working with your hands, our jewelry making classes, our ceramics classes, our photography classes, uh, just to name a few, are classes that are just going to keep you busy. You are going to be doing something different every single time you are in those classes. And you're just learning a very just valuable skill that um, you can use for the rest of your life. So that's a little bit about our School of Liberal Arts, School of Arts, Design and Media Arts. Now um, we're gonna talk a little bit about our School of Science, Health, Engineering and Math. So if you're thinking about health, for example, Santa Fe Community College offers some fantastic art, uh, I'm sorry, health programs that really can lead to some very good paying, promising careers. One of our more popular programs that we have that many students wanna learn more about is our nursing and allied health programs. Also, we have some great certificate programs such as phlebotomy. So if you've ever gone to a lab to get your blood drawn, that's a phlebotomist. And we have students that many of them that are now currently working in some of the labs across Santa Fe, they received their phlebotomy certificate from SFCC. Same thing with EMTs. Uh, we have dental assisting. We even have a great massage therapy program now. These again are programs that can really just get you into some good paying professions. And if we're talking about just uh, rewarding occupations. If you are in the health field, you are working with people and saving lives and making a difference. At SFCC, we actually have a really cool uh, medical simulation lab area. They're one of the largest in the entire state of New Mexico. All the technology that we have in our medical sim labs is the same technology that we have in our hospitals. And what's really cool about these medical sim labs, and again, you can see this and more if you tour SFCC, is you will have the opportunity to see our high fidelity mannequins. And these mannequins, they are just like real people. Our instructors can speak through them. Those mannequins complain, they cry, they bleed. They can use the restroom. We even have a mannequin, her name is Noelle, and she gives birth. It's incredible the technology that we have in those areas. Those high fidelity mannequins can even respond and react to liquid that we give them as if it's real medication and their bodies will respond positively or negatively to that. And again, this is a community college, but it's university quality facilities, small class sizes. So for example, if you're in one of our medical classes, even pre-COVID, uh, you are probably going to be in a class of about 12 to 14 students. Obviously now because of COVID, those numbers are even smaller. And that gives you a really good just opportunity to work closely with your classmates. And you almost build like this really just great rapport with them and this, this great team. And you also just really get to know your instructor. And that's that way in the health area, in the arts area, in, in any number of our classes, you are going to be in small classes and you are going to know who your instructor is, they are going to know who you are. And you are a name, you are a person, you are not just another face in the crowd, you are not just a number. And that's just a really cool thing about our programs. Also, engineering, we have great engineering classes, we have machining programs. In fact, we have a great partnership with Los Alamos National Laboratory in our machining area, where you can actually 
be in our machining program, and you also have access to Los Alamos National Laboratory, and you can get a lot of your class, your in the program paid for, and you almost have like employment to LANL once you complete your machining program. That's just another example of just some of the great opportunities and areas that we have in the School of Science, Health and Engineering and Math. Of course, we have everything from biological sciences. If you're looking to be that medical doctor, that's a really great program that can help jumpstart that and, and help you out as you get started at SFCC. Physical sciences, um, again, just a wide number of different areas uh, in our School of Science, Health, Engineering, and Math. We also have, if you've never been, a phenomenal fitness education center. It is one of the best places to work out in all of New Mexico. And for a community college, I will tell you right now, there is no other college, to my knowledge, community college, I should say, that has a fitness facility like ours. It is big. It has a large swimming pool. It has a weight room, resistance training area, indoor track. It has uh, three full court basketball gyms where you can play basketball, you can play volleyball, soccer, indoor tennis, pickleball. We have a yoga room. We have a spinning room for cycling. There are just a number of really cool classes and programs in that area. Uh, and again, just to give you a good example of some of the quality of the facilities that we have at SFCC. And the last area that we just want to talk about, again, because we just we we know this is a lot of information, so we just want to make sure that we're just going over some of the highlights. And of course, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to ask in the chat. And again, there will be the opportunity to ask questions at the end of this presentation. Daniela, let's tag team on this one, just a little bit about the School of Trades, Technology and Sustainability. So in that area, Daniela, I, I'm, I'm thinking about like welding and plumbing and HVAC and biofuels. Can you touch base a little bit about those areas? Yeah, so we have a really strong welding program. Again, just state of the art, you know, facilities, you know, so much money in our in our equipment that we offer. We also, you know, um, have partnerships with Nanol also as far as uh, the welding goes. Um, we do have HVAC, um, really strong program as well. So in the trades, we have a lot of um, we have certificates because you know it helps individuals get those under their belt and then they can continue on for a degree. So, um, so yes, we also have a really strong biofuels, you know, working with algae, you know, different things, creating biodiesel. Um, we have some of our vehicles that run off of that fuel, which is amazing. Um, there's a lot of, you know, opportunities, um, you know, through those programs. We also have, you know, um, our controlled environment agriculture. Oh my gosh, that is another amazing program. Um, we started off with a small dome, um, you know, our, our little greenhouse dome. And now we have, I forgot, gosh, what is it's this? It's a 12,000 square, square foot greenhouse. Yes. So we teach like individual and commercial, um, you know, growing um, hydroponics, aquaponics, such a strong program as well. Amazing faculty. So um, yeah. So in those welding, HVAC, biofuels, controlled environment agriculture, um, building construction. Um, we even have a, an Adobe program. Um, what else, Marcos? So even in this area too, culinary arts is another yes. just really fun hands-on program where of course you are learning how to make some four-star, five-star quality uh, entrees. We have two big kitchens. One side of the kitchen is what we call the savory side. That's gonna be your main entrees, your sauces, we always like to say like, think salt and pepper. And then we have another side of the kitchen and that is going to be the pastry side. So that's going to be obviously your, your cakes, your danishes, your chocolates, your croissants, all that is done on that side. That's like the salt and sugar side. Mm -hmm. Students can learn both sides of the kitchen and be just a very just valuable employee at whatever restaurant that they work at. And again, you are learning four-star, five-star quality meals. And what's great about our culinary arts area, even if you just take one culinary class, yeah. I promise you, while you are in those classes, 
you are eating like royalty every single time you are in those classes because everything you make in both the savory side and the pastry side, you get to take home and eat. When I was in college, I was your prototypical broke college student and ramen noodles was like my thing. That's what I could afford. That's what I would eat just about every single day. If you're in culinary arts and you're taking classes there, you will be eating significantly better than your prototypical college student like myself when I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, also in that area too, criminal justice, yes. business, there are a wide range of different programs there uh, in, in those areas. Again, 100 different program degrees and certificate options. These are just the tip of the iceberg of what we are talking about. But if you have any questions, feel free to schedule an appointment. Daniela's included the booking link in the chat. You can contact any one of us and we'll be more than happy to either answer some basic questions or we will be more than happy to get you connected with a faculty or staff member in these respective areas that we're talking about, whether it's in the arts area, the health and science area, trades and technology. There are a plethora of folks that wanna help you out and answer your questions. And with that, we have talked about advising. We've talked about the Student Resource Center, dual credit, recruitment and outreach. We've talked a little bit about the different programs that we have on our campus, such as um, liberal arts and all of our different academic programs. We've heard from TRIO. Now it is time to hear about how you can actually come to Santa Fe Community College and save as much money as possible. Now is a wonderful time to become a student. I don't think to my knowledge there's ever been a better time to take classes uh, and, and just have just the amount of financial resources that are available. To talk a little bit more about scholarships and grants and what we have to offer, I would like to turn the meeting over to our wonderful student employment program manager, Susie Weaver. Susie, please take it away. Thank you, Marcos. Hi, everyone. I'm Susie Weaver. I work in the financial aid office. And I am the student employee manager, but I'm representing financial aid because I am a big part of that office and do every part of that. Everybody in our office is multitasking in that office. We also have half our staff is bilingual in Spanish. So please feel free to uh, come visit us. So financial aid, our office, the only reason we exist is to help you with your financial aid. And, and financial aid can be very daunting to some people. And um, because first off, we talked to you about doing your FAFSA. Have you done your FAFSA? You need to do your FAFSA. Well, FAFSA, that word already, if you don't know it, is going to make your eyes kind of glaze over, I think. Um, but what it is, it's a free application for federal student aid. And that application opens the door to everything. You do that application, and we are there to help you with it. We have, you can set up online appointments with us. And we will take an hour, hour and a half, maybe another day, another day to help you slowly sometimes get everything you need. I don't want that to frighten you, but it's just that it's a process. Sometimes people sit down and they do their fast spin 30 minutes, but I just wanna give you uh, the idea and to let you know that we are with you through the whole time just be patient and communicate with us. And we'll have this relationship to help you um, get your financial aid because it's free money. And we're all about giving you free money. Everybody in our department wants to give you as much free money as we can. And to do that, you have to apply. And then you might have to provide some uh, documents or other applications to get even more money. So the, um, 
you do this application and from that it's done online if you are a u.s citizen or you have your green card and you're a resident you actually do it online if you're a non-us citizen you want to do what's called a paper fafsa and that allows you to also get aid in scholarships. So when you do uh, the FAFSA online, you may be eligible for grants because that's for federal money. And that's what a lot of people think. They say, well, I don't do my FAFSA because I'm not eligible for federal money for, for different reasons. Um, maybe you're a non-US citizen or your parents make too much money, but you should do that application because there's other financial aid you may be eligible to receive. So the FAFSA is not financial aid. Financial aid is grants, scholarships, student employment, student loans, and um, uh, we don't talk about student loans because we'll help you with that, but um, we try to help you get all free money at Santa Fe Community College because most of our students get enough free money that they do not have to get student loans. And quickly, the name of the application is FAFSA. So I'm sorry if that was confusing. So you do this FAFSA, you want to uh, get in touch with the financial aid office. You're going to email us and I will uh, send you that address. And from that, we'll help you uh, get the grants, apply for scholarships, apply for student employment and any other funds you might get. So many students um, get, you can get from as little as help with all your tuition, and fees paid with possibly the New Mexico lottery or some other scholarship, all the way up to grants, scholarships, uh, CARES Act, everything. I've seen some of our students get $20,000 a year in financial aid. Now this is a college that, what is tuition right now, Marcos? Like $48 for- $49 student. a credit hour. $49, $49 credit hour. Most of our students get financial aid that pays for their tuition, fees, books, and they actually get money back. And that money can be used for anything to support you in college. You can use it to buy a computer, to buy a car, to get to college. You can use it to save it for when you get, uh, you move on to a more uh, expensive four-year college. So for example, most of our students are paying, if you go full time, you live in Santa Fe, you're paying roughly um, $600, I would say a semester. What do you, do you agree with that, Marcos? So seven fifty. That, that, that like sounds that. like a good ballpark figure. You know, some classes have more fees. It depends on the fees. That doesn't include books. Now, if you go to UNM, first semester, that's about $3,000. So that takes all your financial aid. Not to put down u &M, it's a great school, but you may, you know, it's a great thing to come get your core classes, find out what your path is that you want. You may wanna try several things. Once you have your path, you get your first two years, then you go on to um, a four-year college such as UNM, and you have your money um, at that point. So financial aid is a complex um, subject, and I can talk for an hour and a half, which I have done. I've done hour and a half presentations. So, um, but that's just it in a nutshell. And the biggest thing I want to let you know is everybody should apply for financial yes. aid. Right out of high school, my age, older, Everybody should apply. And like a lot of people here, I also went to Santa Fe Community College. I came back to uh, get a second career. My first career, like a lot of people now, it was boom and then it was bust. And I came back and re-educated myself. I started out at um, Santa Fe Community College and went on to Highlands. It's awesome. So, um, 
So please, 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 contact financial aid. I'm going to put the uh, email. Email is the best way to get hold of us. And you can certainly call, and we can give you general information over the phone. But because financial aid is about money, we like to protect uh, your financial aid information. And so we can help you with emails so that it's um, more secure with your information. Susie, thank you very much. And this is just the perfect um, time now to just allow students to ask us any questions that they have in chat or by turning off your microphone. And Susie, there are already questions coming in specifically regarding financial aid right. in the chat. I can see one. There may be some previous ones, but when is the financial aid for 2022 due? That is actually, you can do that right now. It's available. That's the 2022-2023 FAFSA. And people start applying for that October 1st. You know, you want to start doing that right away. If you're not, you know, school hasn't started yet. So now is a really good time. If you want us to assist you in financial aid, you can get on and set up an appointment with us and we'll spend as much time as, as you need uh, to help you with that. If you have not applied for financial aid yet and you're attending in spring, you want to do the 2021-2022 FAFSA. So there's actually two FAFSAs available right now, but and both should be done right now, actually. Good question. Excellent. Great and question. And then there's another one, Susie, about the Road to Success Scholarship. Yes, the Road to Success. That is for students that are, uh, have just graduated from high school or have gotten your GD. If you're even an older person and you just got your GD, you can qualify for the New Mexico Lottery. There's quite a few rules with the New Mexico Lottery and we're happy to help you with financial aid in that. Uh, you have to be in 12 credit hours and you can, um, but it's a good uh, scholarship for non-US citizens. So you're in 12 credit hours and you uh, pass with at least a 2.5 GPA every semester, which is like a C plus, and you can get it for seven semesters and that's enough to get possibly here at Santa Fe Community College. Uh, you'll get four semesters because your first one you want to apply for scholarships at Santa Fe Community College and get this, it's called our Road to Success. Your first semester is the qualifying semester for the lottery. If you qualify by passing 12 credit hours with a 2.5, then you're on the lottery and you can get seven semesters. But the even better scholarship, uh, the government, governor and the legislature uh, passed it a couple of years ago is the Opportunity Scholarship because that also pays, uh, the New Mexico lottery pays for just tuition, but the opportunity scholarship, oh my gosh, we're running out of time, aren't we? Pays for uh, tuition and fees, and you only have to be in six credit hours to get that. So um, as you can see, I could, and we have Santa Fe Foundation scholarships, which are just, and the thing is financial aid doesn't mean that you're needy or poor. I mean, it is for people that need assistance, but it's for everyone. It's for everyone. So thank you. I, I went over my time a little. Uh, did I answer all the questions though? I believe you did. Yes, Susie, thank you very much. And, and of course, if you all have any questions, just please refer to the chat um, and you can reach out to us even after this um, info session. But um, we still have a little bit of time for some extra questions. And um, if there's, is, does anyone else have any other questions in chat or do they want to turn off their microphone and ask? You can ask any one of us. Oh, student employment. Student employment. Can I just quickly, quickly, yes. really quick. Student employment, we need student employees. You can come and work for 20 hours, 20 hours a week. You get paid $12.32 an hour. But we have to work with your school schedule. It's a great opportunity. You can contact financial aid or me. Thank you. Great plug, Susie. Absolutely. And um, so I just have a question. So Emily, so 
would you recommend, so why is it important for a student not to self-advise? Because it could be tempting when you're looking at the degree plan online and you're thinking, well, why don't I just advise myself? Why is it just crucial for students to make sure to speak to their academic advisor every single semester when it's time to register for the new semester? Great question. Uh, sometimes the degree plan seems pretty straightforward and easy to follow and you just da, 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 but there are kind of some minefields in there. One example might be uh, you have to take college algebra for your degree and you don't like math. So you're gonna take other classes and wait and do math later. And then you get to your last semester and you're like, okay, I'm gonna take math now and I'm gonna get it done. But in order to take math, you have to take a math placement test. And if you don't test into, well, you take a test which places you into a class. And if you don't place into college algebra, if you place into like one of the, um, we call them foundational classes that build up your skills to college algebra. And there are three in the sequence before college algebra. If you place all the way at the bottom, then you got to start there, take the next math class, take the next math class, and then take the college algebra that's on your degree plan. So it's kind of a little bit of a hidden extra class sometimes if you're taking a math or an English class that has a prerequisite that you have to meet or a placement level that you have to meet before you get there. Um, another, I'll just give one other example. There are lots of ways you can get stuck. Um, uh, let me think of one. Uh, we have a lot of general education classes where your degree plan will say, just take a, class, a humanities class. Well, if you don't consult the like officially approved classes that will satisfy humanities, you can take that class and the registrar will not let it count for that category. So a lot of times you're thinking things that are kind of like logical and common sense, but they're, they could be tricky. So it's really best just to advise with an advisor. Sometimes you uh, might take a class because it says on the degree plan, I have to take this class, but nobody looked at your transcript from your other school and there was a class kind of like it that we could have transferred in so you wouldn't have to have, to have taken that class. So it's just really good to have an extra pair of eyeballs on what you're doing, making sure that what you're doing is correct. Excellent, Emily, thank you very much. That is very helpful. Okay, it is actually 7.01 PM right now. Everybody did such a great job at staying on schedule and we are happy to stay on, um, at least I am. Um, and if anyone else would like to stay on a little bit um, later on, um, we can extend the time and answer any questions that you have. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop record. So that might, in case you feel like turning off the microphone or just asking any direct questions, anything like that, please let me know. So for the viewing audience who we will be sharing this with, thank you all so much. And uh, again, January 18th, Tuesday, is the first day of spring 2022 classes, but now is a great time to start signing up. There is still time to take classes for spring 2022, and we hope to see you at SFCC. So thank you so much.